So, good morning. I am Janice Green. I am not Pastor Erica. Erica is uh, taking a weekend off with her family, so you have to put up with me today. So, <clears throat> this morning when uh, I was out walking my dog, the sunset was absolutely beautiful. Oranges and I'm um, sunrise. Sorry. Uh, <coughs> There were oranges and pinks and purples. It was absolutely beautiful. And the thing that popped right into my head was, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. At this time, I want to introduce Alabaster. We are excited to have them back with us. Um, K.I., wave your hand over there. Emmanuel is on the keyboard over there. And um, he is bringing new energy, and we are so glad to officially have you. We had a little tease of this two weeks ago, um, but look forward to doing two or three songs every Sunday with this wonderful group. We're going to start with Reckless Love. I think this was a God thing because the day of his interview, the choir and the youth had just sung this song, and he brought this song to sing. So um, it was a wonderful gift. K.I., welcome. We are so glad to have you. Emily, will you wave your hand? Yay, and Emily's out there. Be sure to welcome Emily and K.I. And now we'll continue with Reckless Love. Amen. Amen to that. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Uh, feedback is the best compliment ever. Well, like I said, like she said, you know, it's my first Sunday here. I'm very blessed to be here. Um, I'm truly am happy that they chose me for the job, and I'm blessed to be able to bring a different style to the church. May I ask you to please join us in worship, whether that be standing or sitting down. That's all acceptable. Brings you closer together. Before, before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. And you have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath. Away. And 
for what you have given us. Lord, we know that you, we are your hands and feet. Lord, thank you for sending music. Thank you for sending people to give the word, Lord. We ask prayers for Janice as she gives the word today. Lord, we just want to know that we are loved and that you have not forsaken us, and we know that you haven't. Help us as we unpack that today. Lord, we lift up our world. We lift up things going on in our community that have us concerned and worried, Lord. And we just ask for your prayers and your presence. In your name we pray, Lord. Amen. At this time, the choir is going to do He Suffered and Died. This Lent, as we are doing this series of the um, seven words from the cross, we have more Sundays that we are unpacking the crucifixion and that sadness. Um, it lends well because we have to remember we all are looking forward to Easter. And not only Easter on Easter Sunday, but we all have little Easters throughout the year. So I'd like to thank Linda for directing this so I could play cello.
As we continue with Jesus' words from the cross, our scripture this morning is from Mark, chapter 15, verses 33 and 34. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lemai sabachthani which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Joan. Five years ago, my eight-year-old great-nephew was diagnosed with leukemia. He went to St. Jude's, he spent three years there undergoing treatment and was declared cancer free. He came back to school and all his activities. He's big into sports, he loves to hunt and camp and fish. But last fall, the cancer came back. Back to St. Jude's, he was given a new treatment that was working, they sent him home and then it wasn't working anymore. So now he's back at St. Jude's undergoing intense chemo. And he was such an active young man. He's polite, he's hardworking. His parents cried out to God, and I know I did too. Sorry. Why is this happening? He is such a good boy. And I know that people all over the world do this. They wonder why it happens to them, their child. But why, God, why? Have you ever felt forgotten, abandoned by God? Maybe it was because of the loss of a job, an unexpected illness, an unexpected death, divorce, loneliness, being treated unjustly, seeing innocents killed by war? Have you ever cried out to God? Have you ever asked God, where are you? If you have, you are not alone. We live in a broken world, but Jesus came to save the world. His name means he saves. He came to earth in human form to bring the new covenant to us. He was both fully human and fully divine. But even Jesus was taunted, abandoned, and unjustly treated. As we heard in the song, he went to the cross where he endured horrible pain that is unimaginable for most of us. He was beaten. He had spikes nailed into his hands and feet. He was taunted with a crown of thorns that were shoved into his head. And on the cross, he struggled for every breath. Toward the end, he cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? We see Jesus in his humanity on the cross at this point. We've heard many stories of people in the Bible crying out to God. As Erica mentioned recently, the Israelites cried out to God out of fear many times. Even though they had just seen the miracle of provision to get out of Egypt. Jeremiah was a prophet of God. He was a prophet for many years. But his message was always about impending violence and destruction if the people did not change their ways. He's sometimes called the weeping prophet because his message was not a pleasant one. When Jeremiah was threatened at one point, he was thrown into a well to die. And during this time, he felt abandoned, but he turned to God. 
and he prayed a type of prayer called a lament. In Jeremiah 20, verses 7 and 8, he says to God, I have become a laughingstock all day long. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I must cry out, I must shout, violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision all day long. A lament is a cry of sorrow and sadness before God. Matt Miofsky, in his book on Jeremiah called Fail, What to Do When Things Go Wrong, he says that a lament is a raw and authentic expression of what disappointment, sadness, and despair feel like. Have you ever been there? Jeremiah felt despair. But Jeremiah stayed connected to God even though he didn't feel very connected sometimes, but he stayed connected through that prayer of lament. Lament are some of the oldest forms of poetry. A lament shows honest feelings to God, even if it's anger. I used to think that prayers always had to be very nice and proper. But God knows our thoughts, and saying them out loud shows trust in God. David Taylor, in his book, Open and Unafraid, The Psalms as a Guide to Life, writes about laments many psal- because many psalms are laments. And most laments have a specific form. They start with a complaint, like we saw in Jeremiah, I'm a laughingstock. Then they go to a plea, asking for something in, in particular. And they end with a resolution or response of hope. Jesus knew laments. As I said, many were psalms. Many psalms are laments, I should say. And the psalms were sung regularly in the synagogue. He knew those scriptures. His cry to God on the cross were from the psalms, specifically a psalm of David. Psalm 22, verse 1, says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Now think about Jesus on the cross. There's a crowd of people there, okay, watching this whole thing. They knew those psalms too. They had sung them in synagogue as well. They knew who Jesus was talking to, God the Father. And they recognized that complaint. But they also knew and recognized the petition in that psalm, which was verse 19 and 20, which says, But you, O Lord, do not be far away. O my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword. And they were familiar with the response of hope at the end of that psalm, in verses 27 to the end which says, all the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of all the nations shall worship before him, for dominion belongs to the Lord. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying, he has done it. This was a response of hope for the future, for us. Jesus' humanity was shown through his suffering. And what did he do? He went back to the Psalms that he had physically sung during his time on earth. 
Jesus prayed many times during his earthly life when he was in need. When he would be exhausted after his ministry, when thousands of people would crowd around him. In the Garden of Gethsemane, before he was arrested, asking God to take this cup from me, but not my will, but yours. And with these words on the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He is showing us now how to pray when we're feeling sad and alone and afraid and angry. He was humiliated, betrayed, abandoned, and physically suffered, but he went back to prayer. So this is a reminder to us that we need to go back to prayer. Even when we don't want, know what to say, we can pray the laments, just like Jesus did. Go to the Psalms, go to the others that are in there, and pray them when you don't know what to say. We may cry out, but by going to prayer, we are never, ever alone. God walks with us through the dark times and helps us remember that Easter is coming. I want to finish, I know this is going to seem strange, but I'm going to finish with a story about my dog. This is Leopold. Leopold is a rescue dog. I've had him for about six months now. He is very playful, so playful that I could not get him to come in this morning, so I was almost late getting here. He's lovable, and he absolutely loves to go on walks. He leaps literally with joy when I say, let's go for a walk. But when we get outside, as we move down the street, he gets, starts getting anxious and fearful. He's fearful of people that he hasn't met, doesn't know, especially men. So I think there was some abuse issues maybe in his past. But even more so, he is fearful of loud vehicles, trucks, school buses, trash trucks, things like that. I always reassure him as we walk along, and usually I can get him by most things. If a person's working in their garage or something, I can get him by there by reassurance. But occasionally, he gets so scared, he literally collapses to the ground and won't move. So I started reaching out and getting down and petting him and talking to him. And I started saying, it's okay, I've got you. I've got you. And then last week, as we were walking, I realized that when we are so frightened or so uh, sad and lonely, that we are just collapsing in on ourselves that we can turn to God and he's there to say, I've got you, I've got you, I'm in control. Remember to always follow Jesus' example and even when you don't feel like it, turn to prayer, amen. Now we come to a time of prayer If you have not seen emails, Carol Daniels in the hospital, remember her. We have good news that Jean Day has been released from the hospital and is in rehab. And I know there are concerns on your heart as well. Please feel welcome to come to the altar and pray, or you may stay in your seat.
the Lord God, El Shaddai, the God who is all-sufficient. We thank you for your peace that transcends our understanding. Even when we are surrounded by problems, feelings of loneliness, helplessness, and desperation, that we can always cry out to, re to you and receive your peace. We live in a broken world, and we see the devastation of war, of hunger, homelessness, suffering, and injustice. It is easy to be overwhelmed and to feel like we are sinking. We need to fix our eyes on you, the one who never changes. Now we lift up our joys and concerns to you, O Lord. We are thankful for the people and the blessings that you bring into our lives, and we thank you that you are in control. Lead us this week as we focus on the hope that you give us and the, give the world. And now we pray the prayer that you taught your disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> At this time, um, we're going to have a little bit of a music history lesson. Um, there is a bomb in Gilead. I'm going to ask you to stand after I talk, so just hang on. When I was a youngster, I didn't know what bomb was. In fact, I thought it was a different word all completely, B-O-M-B. -B. And I'm like, that did not make sense to me. But as we look at this, this goes right along with what Janice had been talking about. Um, there is a bomb in Gilead. This was sung by African Americans. This was sung in their darkest hours. This was sung when they were tortured, and but they still had this hope. The scripture this is taken from is from Jeremiah 8, 22, the weeping prophet. And if we unpack this just a little bit, it won't be real long. <clears throat> we are at a time in history when um, the Babylonians were attacking and ultimately destroyed the city of Jerusalem. They were in a very, very dark time, both wounded spiritually and physically. Well, then we have this Gilead, and Gilead was a kind of like an oasis in their desert. Gilead was a hilly green area that had a bunch of trees east of the Jordan River, not far from where they were in Jerusalem, that was known for its trees. And the trees had the sap or, you know, the balm that was used for healing. There were healing powers in that. And we can, you know, analyze that and relate it to the healing powers of God. Um, you know, they were in despair, and there were healing powers for the sin-sick soul to make the wounded whole. And Jesus died on the cross that we could have that same healing powers. So will you stand and sing, There is a bomb in Gilead? It's not one we sing very often, but it is a good one and relates really well to what we're doing today. <clears throat>
may be seated. Thank you, Kathy. We come to a time of offering, and as you may have noticed in your bulletin, that this is UMCOR Sunday. It's the United Methodist Committee on Relief. UMCOR has been one of the first to arrive at many of these natural disaster sites. You may recall that we have sent cleaning kits down to the coast uh, when hurricanes have come through. They are there to serve and to help others. We're going to watch a short video about UMCOR, and you have a, an envelope in your bulletin that if you would like to make a donation to UMCOR, that you can put it in that, please. Disaster strikes. We all want to help. But when days are dark, you can't always be there to show the love of Jesus to the suffering. But someone should be there. And someone is. And you are the one who makes it happen. How? By your generous giving to UMCOR Sunday. Your support enables the United Methodist Committee on Relief, UMCOR, to act as the hands and feet of Christ, embracing and supporting those in need through their darkest days. Thanks to your gift on this special Sunday of the United Methodist Church, UMCOR is able to provide relief and long-term support for recovery. Not only do we provide immediate emergency assistance in the aftermath of a crisis, we also create sustainable solutions in the following months, even years of recovery long after everyone else has gone home. Your gifts form a firm foundation, a base for operations from which UMCOR can reach and serve the hurting. Your giving enables UMCOR to keep the promise that all gifts given to help a specific cause go 100% toward meeting that need. For more than 75 years, UMCOR has met the needs of the suffering. And today, we continue that labor of love and service in 80 countries around the world. Thanks to you and your generous support through UMCOR Sunday, UMCOR will continue to be there this year to show the love of Christ to children, families, and communities when disaster strikes. Because together, we do more. Some of you uh, may wonder what uh, UMCOR is doing for um, the Ukraine. Well, UMCOR does not send supplies okay, across the oceans because of the expense of it, but they work with United Methodist uh, churches and relief organizations in those areas and send money and support to them so that they can carry out some of this work. So they are working in the Ukraine as well. So as we go to offering, give to God and watch what God will do.
stand for the doxology. be seated. As Erica always says, there are many ways to give. We have food up here that people have donated some of the food for the Ozarks Food har Harvest, and we, we ask blessings for the people who need the food and that they get what they need. We also have a couple of activities coming up. April 9th, Saturday is the church cleanup where we're cleaning out the closets and the drawers and things like that. But the creation care team is also going to be hosting a green fair that day. We will have opportunities for you to bring the stuff you want to get rid of to the church. We will have uh, dumpsters and trailers here for that. But we will also have information booths about uh, native plants and the soap refill shop will be here giving free samples. The uh, compost coalition and a variety of other things, including some activities for kids as well. And you'll notice there's one uh, item on there called Free Cycle. And there is a woman in town who, who contacted Pastor Erica and she collects from a variety of sources clothing items. And then she sets them out and anybody can come take them for free. So she will be set up on the parking lot uh, with the clothing that people can take. And then we also, if you would like to help us with this and get involved, our regular Creation Care Team meeting is Monday night, this Monday night at 6.30 p.m. here in the room uh, back by the south door. No, what direction is that? Um, east door. <laughs> Sorry about that. So as we... Uh, our, our, it's time to go, and I would like to leave these words with you. According to Isaiah 49, verse 15 and 16, God says, I will not forget you. See, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. Remember that God hears you, God cares for you, and God is always with you. Amen. Yes, wait, before with the last song. Sorry, I forgot. Thank you. And the parking. Oh, yes. And before Janet reads a letter from Pastor Erica, I wanted to tell you that, um, remind you that this big 50th anniversary celebration at Bass Pro is going on starting the 31st. And uh, they are expecting hundreds of thousands of people to come into town. Campbell will be closed part of the time and sunshine is gonna be a mess. So remember, uh, think about a different route to church next Sunday and on Wednesday night as well. So, Janet. As a representative of the Staff Parish Committee, I am sharing news that Bishop Farr has appointed er Pastor Erica to serve as pastor of Harmony United Methodist Church in, over in the Overland section of St. Louis beginning July 1st. She is sad to leave the beloved community that has persevered together through this pandemic and, the, and how the door is opening to incredible possibilities. But she is also excited to see what the Lord is, has in store for her at Harmony and her family in St. Louis. I know this is an odd way to share this information. The, important, the appointment process follows a certain order that moves rather quickly because there are many pastors to place. Unfortunately, Pastor Erica has already scheduled a well-needed break and is not in town today, but the news must still be shared so the process can be continued. We do not know who will be taking her place, and we can wait patiently in prayer for God to guide the right person to Asbury's needs. 
A letter from Eric, Pastor Erica, was emailed out yesterday, which I assume most of you have already received, and will be sent along to, in the April newsletter on Monday. She will be back in worship on April 3rd to speak to this process. Ministry at Asbury is still going to continue to do good work together in the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And it is encouraging us to do so. God has a future and a hope for Asbury. Please uh, be in prayer for Asbury and at the conference as they make the decision on who will be coming to Asbury. Let us keep uh, going forward in the way we always do because Asbury is a family and uh, this is just the Methodist process and uh, we are strong in the faith and the Holy Spirit will guide us. Thanks be to God. Well, I ask before we all leave today that you join me in uh, worship one more time. Is 
say yes and amen, cause faithful you are, faithful forever you will be, faithful you are, all your promises are yes and amen. Promises are yes and amen. All your promises are yes and amen. Thank you. Have a wonderful week and remember to always turn to God.